Hi, it's me, your friendly neighborhood alien, stranded here on the third rock from the sun, and uh, I have chapter three of The Whispering Shadow for you. Yes, that is right. Chapter three of The Whispering Shadow, the 1933 movie serial released by Mascot Pictures and starring Bella Lugosi. I thought before we do that, though, we should talk about one of the actors. Um, Carl Dane, he's the, the tall guy in this movie, playing Sparks, the dispatcher slash comic relief. Yeah, I want to talk about him. So, he was a silent film star. Um, he started technically in 1917 in a short, but the scenes were cut from that short, So, and, and the film was lost, so nobody even knows the name of it. And it wasn't until 1918 when he got his first real role, and he played this multiple times as uh, Chancellor von Bethmann Hallweg in My Four Years in Germany, uh, an anti-German propaganda film. Um, it wasn't until 1925 where he actually made it big when he was cast as Slim in the Big Parade. And that kind of blew up his career. He became famous after that. Which is kind of cool for a guy who was born in 1886 in Denmark. Um, he started acting because, well, the bug bit him while his uh, father was working as a curtain puller in a local theater in Denmark. He also became famous for comedy because uh, he was cast in Birdless, the Magnificent, alongside uh, George K. Arthur, and they kept doing movies as a comedy duo known as Dane and Arthur. But, once again, he was a Danish silent film star. He had a very, very thick Danish accent. I mean, you can hear it when he's talking, his thick accent accent, you know, in this movie. And, well, in 1929, the talkies were on the rise, silent films were on the decline, and MGM, which he was under contract, there, you know, he, he, they, they had his contract. They owned him. They thought his Danish accent was a little too thick and uh, difficult to understand, so they cast him less and less. But, he did continue, you know, performing. He was in occasional movies. Um, he did some vaudeville on his own, and for a little bit he worked with George K. Arthur in vaudeville, which was, you know, good, you know, doing comedy. But this role was his final role. He and, um, he was only like 47 when he passed away in 1934. Um, for well, his career was on the decline, and he was broke, and um, he only saw the one way out. Unfortunately, um, friends of his that he was supposed to meet for dinner went to his apartment when he was late and found him. It was kind of a tragic end. Um, that, well, yeah, it was sad. But he was known as a great comedian. And I think, you know, maybe someday I might even see if I can dig up some of his uh, other work, his comedy roles, and uh, see how funny that guy was. Even if it is just silent films. Silent films can be fun. So now we get to... Chapter 3 of The Whispering Shadow, The All-Seeing Eye. When we last left, Vera Strang and Jack Foster were in a room which was closing in upon itself. Let's see how they escape as we begin it now.
Carl Dane is the only person I do not suspect of being the Whispering Shadow. Because I am the Whispering Shadow. Now, why would you have that in your house? Are you trying to crush your guests? Bella. Bella Lugosi, you have some explaining to do, mister. Why are you trying to crush your guests? Oh, wait. No, I, I know why. I know why. I've worked it. I've, I've worked in customer service. I know why you want to push your guests. Bella Lugosi, you have some explaining to do. Where did you get that room and how can we put it in every single store? Shadow know that where they are. Is the shadow the all seeing eye? Am I the all seeing eye? Am I watching myself? To the referee, quick. Okay, I think I'm freaking myself out now. Um I'm I'm just gonna derail that train of thought. No, uh, he yes, means Seth broke nice the Terminator. By his picture in the papers. How long has he been gone? Just a minute before you came. He can't be far away, officer. Come on, Bill. Meddling fools. Who could have sent them here? Then it, it wasn't you. Me bring the police here? What did you do with the jewelers? I didn't get them. But Flay thought you had them, or he wouldn't have followed you here. I didn't have time to open the package before Flay snatched it from me. Then somebody took them out of the package before you got it. Who could have done it? It wasn't me. It could only have been one Can't man. Can't blame me for this he one. I did not do it. I wasn't the there. Plane. It Who was the one-armed man. 
one of the officials of the storage company. His name escapes me. Uh, oh, yes. Now I remember. It is... Jack Foster. He's the Whispering Shadow, too. In fact, I think we're all the Whispering Shadow. You're the Whispering Shadow. I'm the Whispering Shadow. That potted plant is the Whispering Shadow. Everybody is the Whispering Shadow. The Whispering Shadow is all. Any word from the Shadow? Yes, we're away here. He'll give his orders at 11 o'clock. But Mr. Raven, how could you, the greatest detective in the country, let the Shadow attack this warehouse and get away with it without the slightest clue? What makes you think I haven't a clue, Bradley? I know what the Shadow's after. You do? What is it? He's after the perfect the recipe for chocolate chip Imperial cookies. Jewel but that is something that I will never give up. He is not yes. having my recipe Cleverest for chocolate chip cookies. I refuse to let yes. anybody have that for recipe. Hello? Foster talking, Mr. Raymond. I've trailed the shadows men and found their hideout. Right, I'll meet you there. Wait a minute. Wasn't that uh, Foster on the wire? Yes. <laughs> he believes he's found the Shadow's hiding place. Well, aren't you going to call the police? No, will you do that for me, please? Tell them I'll meet them the first turn off beyond the country club. Is Mr. Steinbeck in his laboratory? No, Mr. Raymond. He's on the roof. Look next to the broken aerial. Well, then you better go up and help him. But, uh, There's I... nothing you can do here until the aerial is repaired. All right. Blundering fools. You think that Foster is dead? He has tracked you down. Act quickly. My men are all posted, Mr. Foster. The place is completely surrounded. We can't wait any longer for Raymond. You'd better... Any sign of the shadow? No, but we're all ready to close in. Lead the way, Sergeant. Two bits. Want us to break in, huh? Well. Pass it all around, boys. Wait, wait. I've never seen the lock I open with this key. No one in there, Sarge. No one upstairs, Sergeant. But if there was anybody here, they've made their clean getaway. They've been warned. Did you tell anyone I found the Shadow's headquarters? Well, uh, only Mr. Bradley. But surely you don't suspect him, the president of the company. I wonder if anyone could have listened in on the phone. No, Perhaps. I think it was us, the viewers, and, and me, the host. We are the Whispering Shadow. Hello, Sparks. Oh. 
Yes, Mr. Jerome. I found somebody who can solve your puzzle for you. Oh, Mr. Jerome. Who is it? He's waiting for you at the end of the main aisle on the third floor. Thank you. Take a look in the radio room, see if Sparks is there. He can, uh, he can tell you better than I. Oh, Sparks? Oh, it looks like he isn't here. But as I told you, there's the door to the roof where I saw a hand reach out and grab a package of jewels. But isn't that where Jerome mistook Sparks? One of the Shadow's men? Yes. Say, that means Jerome was close by when the package fell out of the plane. Do you suppose he could have taken the jewels? Well, it's worth looking into. Let's go down and uh, talk to Mr. Bradley. Oh, somebody's in trouble. Somebody's in trouble. Somebody can get fired. Somebody's in trouble. Well, you will never solve that puzzle. But, Mr. Bradley, we would have captured the Shadow's men if someone hadn't tipped them off. Did you tell anybody I discovered their hideout? Why, uh, come to think of it, I did tell Jerome. But surely you don't think that he... Come in. Excuse me, Mr. Bradley, but this is an urgent message for Mr. Raymond. Thank you, Jarvis. He's got to go to the bathroom, like, really bad. And, you know, it, this being the 1930s, you had to wear your hat, your hat when going to the bathroom. And some buildings, it was just fashionable to have the bathroom, you know, be miles away, so you had to take a cab to, to get to the bathroom. Step on a driver, he's getting away. Well, you told me not to let him get away to us. Get ready. Okay, William. You know, that is totally not the right way to hail a cab. Don't aim your guns at it. You point your guns up in the sky and say, this is a stick-up. That is how you hail a cab. Dick Tracy, he's a good cop. I got him. There he goes. Unfortunately, now he's not properly attired. He lost his hat. Social disgrace. He is just, he's going to be shunned. Shunned by all his peers because he doesn't have a hat. He's torn off the sea line. Kinky. I've got your cover to you, double crossing crook. What do you want? You know what I want. 
Where's your hide, Lester? I don't know what you're talking about. No? That is Jerome's house. Father, promise me you'll be careful. There's nothing to worry about, Vera. These smoke pots will make Jerome show me where the jewels are hidden. Don't try to stall me, Jerome. I know the jewels were in that bag. You tell me where you hit them, or... I'm not wasting any more time on you, Jerome. You'll tell me. Not a peep out of you. Peep. the jewels. Well, there goes your insurance rates. Premiums going up right, right, right now. It's, it's just skyrocketing. And that's it for the Whispering Shadow, Chapter Three: The All-Seeing Eye. Chapter Four will be on next stream. I will see you on the flip side. <laughs> <laughs>